We have three watches from the vault that I gathered all across the spectrum that I think are great watches to talk about. These are watches that we have for sale currently on our website, uh, Eclectic Mix. And I'll get us started with this piece right here. So this watch right here is a Rolex GMT Master. We'll work here on the pano. Do you want to hold it? This might be easier sure. because you'll, you're a little bit closer. There we go. So this is a GMT Master II 16718 with a black bezel and champagne surdy dial. So surdy dials, for those that aren't aware, are gem set Rolex dials. And in particular on the GMT Master IIs, you have rubies and diamonds, and on the Samariners you would have had uh, sapphires and diamonds. And these dials in particular, have gained a lot of attention over the last several years due to, in part, the, the rarity and the lack of seeing them in, in the market. So this particular example happens to be in pristine condition, um, and I think it's just you know, a great version of the watch, and we, we have it with, complete with the box and papers. All right, folks, and serial number. Of course, this one dates to around 1990. Interesting transitional period for Rolex. Coming out of the 80s as a real luxury manufacturer, the beginning of the name that kind of transcended the watch industry. This is the period when Rolex went from being a byword for quality in the professional watch area to still being that, but also a standard of luxury, a standard bearer of status, and I think the Surdy GMT really embodies that duality. The combination of the rubies and the diamonds, it is beautiful, but it's also functional. It's still everything the GMT Master is, but it's also that new identity, and this is an interesting Rolex from the crossroads when the image of the company and the role of the company began to change. Definitely, and they also have Surdy dials on the bimetal versions of the watch, so, and the, you know, the rupier. Uh, versions and whatnot, so great watch all around. Uh, moving on to the next piece here. Uh, this watch actually ended up being much more interesting than I had thought. So this watch right here is the Ulysse Narden San Marco limited edition depicting the lightning clipper. So this watch right here was done in Claws and I enamel by Ulysse Narden in the early 2000s, and they made it in multiple metals, this one being platinum in an addition of 30, and then they also made it in rose gold in an addition of 30. So the Lightning was actually one of the largest clippers to have ever been built in the United States. And at the time of it being built, it only cost 30,000 pounds to, to build. And I thought that it was very interesting because you can now get a watch that features the clipper for you know well under that number, but uh, nonetheless pretty close. So it's a watch that after doing a little bit more research uh, was just seen at Sotheby's in Hong Kong available for sale for anywhere from 23,000 to 38,000 uh, and we have it listed at under 20. So uh, I thought that Ulysse Narden did an unbelievable job with the enameling work and that the watch happens to be uh, you know beautiful and I, I didn't even realize we had it at the time actually. There have been a number of interesting enameled vessels uh, depicted in the San Marcos and also the Classicos that followed them. All of them are interesting because they were executed by a company called Donze Cadran that initially worked with Ulysse Norden, but like Sigatech, their silicon provider for the hair springs and escape wheels, around 2012, Donze Cadran became an in-house arm of Ulysse Norden, still expert in enameling from conventional to cloisonné to champlevé and everything in between, but the economies of scale that followed from that have allowed Ulysse Norden to continue to lead the industry in enameling. And if you've noticed things like the marine tourbillon of this year with the Grand Faux enamel dial, they've also been able to bring enameling far more into the mainstream and the realm of the almost accessible. This is not exa an example of that. So as enameling becomes more common overall, Look back to the most exceptional examples, the cloisonné, the champlevé, the most complicated dials. Those are the ones that will always be scarce, even as enameling becomes somewhat more common in the modern era. Yeah, so absolutely beautiful, and exactly as Tim said, um, Ulysse Narden has a long history with cloisonné enamel, and they happen to do it, I think, one of the best. Beautiful. The, the nautical imagery, too, provides a lot of nuance, tone, shade, form, 
foreground, background. I, I think you just have to have an image with depth to make the most of the medium, especially when you have the inset gold divisions of the cloisonne, mm -hmm. and this watch does that. Exactly, and they've done different ships and whatnot, but uh, this one we happen to have available. So moving on, I see some people are asking if they missed the LV watch, so not yet. You're about to get to take a look. So the next watch we have here is the Louis Vuitton Escale Time Zone. And it has a traditional world time layout where you can set the home time at 12 and you can instantly see the time zone uh, anywhere in the world. Um, and, but it's a design unlike most other, other world times. And you have here depictions with color that are in line with travel badges that I think Louis Vuitton used in the past. Is that right, Tim? Well, exactly. These are nautical pennants, so the imagery of travel, the idea of sailing abroad, the idea of communication in the era before radios, before GPS, it harks back to a more romantic era of travel. And again, because their trunks, their travel trunks, are highly customizable, this is some of the imagery that's been seen on vintage Louis Vuitton travel furniture. I should also mention that the module, all complication done in-house on a prototyping basis by Fabrique Dutton, which is a high horology house purchased by Louis Vuitton in 2011. Now this emulates the 2014 sensation, the Escal World Time, which featured the same pennants. This watch, quite accessible, I believe re retails for just over 7,000, about mm -hmm. 7,200, and you're getting a unique travel time complication, a completely unique imagery. This is unmistakable for anything but the Louis Vuitton Escal series. And then on the case back, a clever hidden rotor that's inset within the case. This is about as entertaining as a rotor gets on an ETA base, and again, the module is Louis Vuitton's, and I think this is a great mix of distinctive imagery, um, perfect transfer of branding from the travel furniture to the watch, and I also think it has a strong identity that's uncommon in the sub-$10,000 watch segment. Agreed, and it's a much more wearable 39 millimeter size versus the larger version of the world time.